Donnie, do you see I, it, when we kicked off? You kind of mentioned that twenty years ago, they, the most the most the World War II vets were eighty years old. And now, they're, a lot of them, the average age is nearing a hundred years old. So, as anyone can assume, like their health at this point. I mean, they're 100 years old. You can assume kind of where a lot of them are at. Now, Bill, who we talked to recently, as Bear said, was sharp as a tack. But do you see like something that was interesting as we were talking to him? You could even tell just with what he was saying about the event coming up, like almost like his mood lift. And I'm sure for you, that's got to be fuel for you to do what you do. Do you see, especially with one like this, where you're talking about how much you guys have planned, do you see their their kind of baseline, just awareness and mood really lift as they're exposed to these things you guys have planned and what what effect does that have on you yeah it's amazing it truly is because it gives them something to look forward to right because you think about 100 year old world war ii veteran who just sits at home and wakes up to eat and then takes a nap and then wakes up you know uh eats taking you know takes a nap and that's just cycle every day and when we offer something like this that's so exciting gives them something to look forward to. And I tell you, there's a lot of veterans that are working out, that are walking, that are trying to stay healthy, just trying to stay in the fight to make sure that they make it through here because they they know it's going to be special. And uh, it's great. It puts a big smile on my face knowing that, um, you know, we're giving them something um, to look forward to and to experience. Um, and then when they get there, I mean, all the hard work is all paid off. And I see those smiles on their faces and they're just like, grab me to the side and say, thank you for getting me here. It just means a lot to our team. I mean, we have an incredible team of volunteers that are stepping up. We have over a hundred volunteers and a lot of them are, are veterans themselves uh, from all different branches, all different wars, which is special. So kind of like resonates with our, our motto, which is taking care of the ones who took care of us. You know, we're always taking care of our oldest generation and this is it. This is the last hurrah. This is the last big scaled up, uh, commemoration, especially for uh, for World War II. Yeah, I think one of the coolest things for me is is with so a lot of these guys, and we've mentioned this before, but when this when D Day happened, you know, there was not commercial air travel, right? You couldn't just like fly back. So a lot of people, of course, were buried in Normandy. Not only did their friends never and their teammates ever get to truly mourn the loss, because it's like, all right, we're we're dancing inland, like the war is on. We're not doing ceremonies back at Normandy for our fallen, right? Um, and then not only that, but their parents weren't able to kind of see the burial of their own son. Um, but for a lot of these guys, they're they're now for the first time in their life in 80 years going to get the opportunity to go to a, a grave site of a guy that maybe they lost next to them, maybe even in their own arms. Right. And uh, the, the you guys have facilitated that. I know that's happened on the previous trips like that is such a move that has to be such a moving moment. Fast forward 80 years, and they're finally able to get that closure at a, at, a, at a headstone, at a quiet cemetery on the cliffs of Normandy, beautifully well-kept headstones as far as the eye can see. And, you know, I, I think for it, all, I almost feel like it needs to be like a mandatory thing for an American to visit a U.S. cemetery abroad to give some perspective, because I know that that hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, when I walked at, at Normandy Cemetery that first time and you see, you know, how vast that, that is. But to, to get down into the specifics of the storylines and you guys to facilitate that for these guys and walk them to those, to those grave sites is such a cool thing. So walk us through, yeah. I guess, the emotions with that and, and your experience doing that. Yeah, well, last year, Bear, uh, we had Richard Rossi. I mean, um, his whole goal was to go back and pay his respects to his, to his best friend that he lost. Um, this is a high school friend. They're both in the band together. They both grew up together. And uh, unfortunately, he was uh, shot and killed uh, in Normandy in, um, in 1944. And he's never been back to his grave. And uh, we have a short video on our website of him um, going back to his grave for the first time. And we talk about the anxiety that, that, that Mr. Rossi had, you know, when we were planning it all out you know we had the pictures and everything and he was walking over there and he just was like already in tears and i mean um i don't do it justice by talking about it the video kind of says it for itself but he goes down to the grave and gets down on both knees and just puts his hand over the gravestone and just like i'm back i told you i was going to come back and I, I mean it just i got goosebumps right now just thinking about it but it was so emotional and you know i was just really proud to to add this closure to his life. I mean, especially at this twilight years, you know, where he is in his life to, you know, provide this opportunity. It just, it means a lot. And, uh, you know, just that experience alone just sets sound waves, you know? And, um, yeah, it's, 
I'll make sure I'll see in the video of it so you can actually see it, what we're talking about. But it just means a lot to give them this opportunity, even at this, you know, even at their age. I mean, you talk about closure, you know, the camaraderie, the brotherhood that we have with each other, you know, because we don't bring family on our programs, right? So we want this to be about them, not about anybody else. So it's just been helpful. And that's just the way that we do it. And it works. Yeah, it's so epic. I mean, that's, can you imagine just the the emotions tied to that? And I know you guys felt that. I'm sure there wasn't a dry eye uh, at that moment, which is so cool. And I think another thing to call out just from a historical perspective, when you go to Normandy, um, that this is maybe, you know, perspective that some haven't thought about, but I was up at Point the Hawk and I was in one of those pillboxes, right? And, you know, the, the insides are all insides of these bunkers are all ch uh, charred because the allies eventually flanked all these positions and they would smoke out the Germans with a flamethrower shooting it into the into the bunker. Right. That, that had these machine gun nests in there. And there's this little slit in the bunker that you can see out into the ocean. Right. Um, where their machine machine guns were positioned. And you can imagine the perspective of a German soldier as the invasion was beginning, you look across the English Channel and you see 6,600 ships approaching you straight on about to make, you know, landing at the beach there. And of course, the, it was very fortified. But you, you, in that moment, imagine how vulnerable you felt just with a belt fed machine gun um, seeing that coming towards you. And that was a really unique perspective I had when I was just sitting in that, in that pillbox looking out across the English Channel like, holy shit. Can you imagine how scary that was for the Germans to see that coming? Um, and, uh, man, like it was just, it's, and then you see the giant, there's giant craters still around these bunkers that are still have been untouched from the, from the shelling that I think there was 105 millimeter shells, maybe, or maybe even bigger, uh, from the, you know, the shelling that they had done the, you know, the day before, uh, to kind of, you know, uh, of course, weaken the positions a little bit. And those, those often it <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just crazy, man. And then I think from the allied perspective and Donnie, you probably agree that beach is really wide, right? Especially at low tide. So when those landing crafts dropped, the the no man's land run they had to make to get to the first line of cover uh, to that first berm, uh, you know, because the Germans were up on the high ground shooting down. It's just crazy. I mean, it was a couple hundred yards they had to run, just completely exposed um, and just absolute chaos. So it's like, you know, if for anyone listening, if you ever have the opportunity to go there and just appreciate um from a historical perspective, both sides of the conflict and just the, the, the enormity of, of what had occurred, you know, it's the largest amphibious invasion the world has ever seen. Um, and, um, obviously a pivotal moment in the war setting that, that, that Western front, uh, in court, you know, that, of course that was the beginning of the end. We, we had to do it, but it was also a, a huge risk. You know, there's Eisenhower talked about, he was either going to be like a hero or a zero. This is either going to be the greatest military campaign of all time or will be the most tragic of all time. It was going to be one or the other. 